Hello again. Today we're going to talk about QImage Ultimate's new version number 123. I want you to remember that number because what I'm going to show you in a moment is as easy as 123. Many of you go to your nearby outside printing source such as Staples or Sam's or Walmart or perhaps some local shop in your town and you have them make the prints for you. Eh, 4x6, 5x7, sometimes it's one great big print you need made and that's the quickest and cheapest way to make it. Okay, I'm going to show you how QImage can have you all set to go just one, two, three. Follow along with me and you'll be amazed. Okay, what it's called generally is called print to file. You're going to make images ready to be printed by the outside printer, but you're going to make them the way you want them to be made. So let's start. We go up to the top left corner where it says file, click, print to, and file. That's pretty easy. Let's assume for the sake of our demonstration that you want some 4x6 borderless prints. Very similar to what you get if you dumped your little memory card off in the shop and you came back four hours later and picked it up. Okay, 4x6, set the resolution at, you know, the nominal 300, which everybody's pretty happy with. Put your dot here where it says online printing uh, or other non-local printers. In other words, you're giving it to somebody else to print the way you want it to be printed. In this box here is the printer profile. Well, right now it's saying Epson Premium Glossy for an R1800 printer, which is mine, and we're not going to use that, of course, unless the store we go to has an R1800 printer. But they will tell you what color space they would like. So for the sake of this demonstration, we have sRGB, or we have Adobe, or if they're really, really top of the line, they're going to offer you a free printer profile, which you can download from their website. But that's for the future. Right now, we're going to pick one of these and just say sRGB is the color space we're going to use. Okay, that's very common, very ordinary. OK, all prints will be 4 by 6 So far, very easy. Click OK. OK, our page changed up here. We now have a 4 by 6 right there in front of us. No problem whatsoever. And we're going to uh, put in some images. Now, you can put in as many as you like. I picked a half a dozen to so save time, and it's pointless to put in 50 or 100. We just sit here and wait for it to cook. So I'm going to click, you know, the plus sign, and I had them all selected, so it put six in with one click. Here's your six. I'll flow through them so you can kind of see what they look like. Okay, we've got all these different images. Okay, now before we go any further, supposing you said, hmm, boy, I don't like these white balls over here. I, I, I want to crop them out. What do I do now? Well, very easy in Q image. All you do is click and go into the page editor, zoom up a little bit like this, okay, and yeah, just like that. And here's your picture on the left hand side, okay, and you can see exactly what it's going to look like. I just click high quality so you can see it better in the video, and we got rid of the balls, okay. Now, if you send it to Walmart that way, or the original way, you would get those floating little whatever they are in there. Okay, we say done, and there's the picture that's actually going to be printed. All right, that's a little demonstration of what you can do with that. I'm going to go back into the page editor for one more second, and that is, I'm going to say, I, look what else I can do. Okay, I'm going to say, well, I could say the park if I want to. Or I can say fisherman. Okay, like that. And say okay. And look what we got. We can put text in our images before we send them out. And there's our picture. Okay, the others haven't been messed with, as you can see. And we're ready to go. 
Okay, what are we going to do now? Very simple. We click print. Okay, here it's saying, what do you want, a JPEG or a TIFF? Well, we're going to make JPEGs, obviously. You don't have to, but we do. Here it's saying, how do you want to name them? Auto name? Well, if you're doing a bunch, you might as well auto name because otherwise you're going to have all kinds of different prints and different names and stuff like that. So auto name for the purpose of this demonstration anyway. And I say, okay, ooh, what's this? This is our destination, where we're going to put these new images that are going to go to Walmart or Sam's or any place you want to take them, your neighborhood store. Okay, well, I'm just going to say okay. Let's see what happens because this is showing me that I'm in my current folder. This folder is where it's destination. Let's see what happens. Aha! You can't use this folder. Why? Because the file names that we're going to assign to these images up here in the upper right hand corner have already been used by the originals. So QImage says, okay, I'll do this for you if you're good. I'm going to make a subfolder for you called QPrints and I'm going to put your new stuff in there, okay? Sure, okay, thanks. So we clicked OK and down on the lower right you can see it's loading, processing, okay, you can see the slide bar going and we'll take a rest here and let it do its job. Okay, it's finished. Now it popped up a little sign here that says, you want me to take you to where I put these pictures? I could take you by the hand. Okay, let's go. Yes. And there's our new folder with the six pictures, okay, the six images. And there they are. All set to go. You can see the resolution in the lower left-hand corner. We made them 4 by 6 at 300 ppi, so 400 times th uh, 6 times 300 is 18, and 4 times 300 is 12, down here in the bottom. Okay, now let's talk about some other options we have here. Okay, when we decided to make these prints, okay, we clicked on print, and we said we want a JPEG, and we say auto naming and all that stuff, and we clicked OK. It wants a destination. I left it here, and I let QImage make a new folder called QPrints. But you have options. You could have said, OK, take it to my E drive, or plug in a uh, thumb drive. Okay, you could have plugged in the thumb drive. As I was saying, you could have plugged in the thumb drive, which I just did. And there it is. There's the Lexar drive, okay? If I say, put the pictures there, and say OK, okay, it says, save files in the I drive. Yes, okay. And now it's printing to that Lexar drive. Well, what does that mean? That means I can pull it out of the machine, jump in my car, head down to my favorite printing store, hand them the thumb drive and say, I'm going to get a coffee and I'll be back in an hour. And that's how easy it is. So I'm going to show you just a few more little choices you have here because you do have some more choices. In the meantime, this thing is spinning along pretty good to here down at the bottom. As you can see, it's all going on that Lexar drive, and I'll be able to pull it out and go to the store with it very, very shortly. Okay, now what I want to show you was the alternative, uh, very, very useful, which is file. Okay. Come on. I forgot my little box here. Do you want to go to the Lexar drive? Well, you already saw me do go to the drive where the images are stored, so I'm going to say no. Okay, but let's go here to File, Print to, File. So we're looking at our original screen. And this time we're going to take monitor or web size copies. So I click there. Okay. And we're not going to send them to a printer, but we are going to send them to Aunt Susie. We'll put them on a disc for her, or we do whatever we want, make a slideshow, all kinds of choices here. Well, the moment I put the dot in here, this changed to a special 
profile for making web copies. Okay? And we don't have to do a thing. We just click OK. But if you look down at the lower right where my pointer is, you'll see that the print sharpening is turned off and the printer ICC is an RGB which matches the screen or the web or however you want to put it and it's all done for you. So that's why we call this QImage Ultimate version 123 and making prints for an outside printing job is as easy as 123. Thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed.